The Chinese regime is furious over the arrest of the Huawei CFO in Canada. If she's extradited to the U.S., there could be trouble. Meanwhile, Chinese authorities have abducted Canadian citizens as Trump prepares his next move in the U.S.-China trade war. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The CFO of one of China's biggest telecom companies, Huawei, has been released on bail. Meng Wanzhou was arrested during a plane transfer last week in Canada and now faces extradition to the United States, where, if convicted, she could face up to 30 years in jail. The conditions of her release were steep. The bail was set at $10 million Canadian, which is about $7 million U.S. Plus, among conditions of her bail, the 46-year-old executive must wear an ankle monitor and stay at home from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. That means she's going to miss out on the thrilling Canadian nightlife. But don't worry, Mung can still greet her friends and supporters at home, like these guys who showed up with flowers at her mansion, which is exactly the same kind of treatment Chinese dissidents get when they're under house arrest. In addition to that, five friends pledged equity in their homes and other money as a guarantee she will not flee. You know, sometimes it takes getting arrested for violating sanctions on Iran to find out who your real friends are. I'm sure that if something like that ever happened to me, Shelley would do the same. Shelley, aren't you going to say anything? Fine, I guess we aren't real friends. Now, China's foreign ministry has called the arrest a mistake. We have already made our position clear to the United States and Canada that they should immediately correct their mistake and release Meng Wanzhou. He went on to say any person, especially if it's a leader of the United States or a high-level figure who is willing to make positive efforts to push the situation toward the correct direction, then that, of course, deserves to be well-received. I'm sorry, any person, especially if it is a leader of the United States? I wonder who Liu Kang could be talking about. Well, President Trump responded with a resounding, maybe. In an exclusive interview with Reuters, Trump said, if I think it's good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made, which is a very important thing, what's good for national security, I would certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary. Which, I guess, is Trump speak for, let's make a deal. Trump has been promising a huge increase in tariffs on Chinese goods unless China will come to an agreement he likes within a 90-day window that's already ticking down. Billions of dollars are on the line. But Meng's arrest has made it more complicated. Chinese state-run media has warned there would be severe consequences for Meng's arrest. It's added yet another point of tension between Washington and Beijing and not just for Washington, also for Ottawa. That's the capital of Canada. On Tuesday, Canada confirmed that one of its citizens, a former Canadian diplomat, was detained there. China has detained Canadian citizen Michael Kovrig. He's a former diplomat, at one point serving as the vice consul at Canada's embassy in Beijing. He was working for the NGO International Crisis Group and was abducted on Monday. I mean arrested. Chinese authorities have publicly stated their arrest of Kovrig totally has nothing to do with Meng Wanzhou. He was simply arrested because his NGO was violating Chinese law by not being registered in China. Amnesty International says the Chinese government has created new laws regulating NGOs specifically for this purpose. The Chinese government recently uh, enacted a law uh, governing the, the, the activities of foreign NGOs. So they all have to be uh, officially registered in China, which is a very difficult for many of them to do. And therefore, uh, because it's so difficult, a lot of times it's, it's impossible to, to do work without, um, in effect, breaking the law. That creates a situation, a lot of the time, the Chinese government can ignore that. Um, but when they need to or when they want to, they can always point to the, this uh, so-called illegal activity by foreign NGO workers and take actions if, uh, if they want to. And as a former Canadian ambassador to China said, in China, there are no coincidences. If they want to send you a message, they will send you a message. But China's fast and loose approach to the law is actually part of the reason they won't understand why this is a bad idea. According to a former Canadian ambassador, it won't work. The Canadian court system is not susceptible to pressure. It is truly independent. Of course, all this should sound very familiar. 
In 2014, Canada arrested a Chinese businessman accused of stealing U.S. military secrets. And not long after, Chinese authorities arrested a Canadian couple living in China. In the end, the Chinese businessman was extradited to the U.S., and the Canadian couple spent two years in prison and house arrest before being deported. Actually, that spy case was pretty complicated and interesting. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a China Uncensored episode about it. Anyway, the point is, if you mess with Chinese citizens for breaking your laws, the Chinese Communist Party won't hesitate to break China's laws to mess with your citizens. In fact, in addition to Michael Kovrig, Chinese authorities have also abducted, uh, detained, another Canadian citizen named Michael Spaver. If you're a Canadian named Michael, maybe now is a good time to leave China. Spaver started a company in China that promotes cultural exchanges with North Korea, and he had helped arrange Dennis Rodman's first trip there. Chinese authorities say that both Michaels are being investigated for activities that endangered China's national security. It's interesting to note that Chinese authorities have only detained Canadians so far, maybe because they realize that taking Americans would bring things to a whole new level. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department is considering issuing a travel warning to U.S. citizens going to China, just to be safe. So what do you think of the arrest of Meng Wanzhou and the detention of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver? Leave your comments below. And now it's the time you've all been waiting for, when I answer questions from a member of my 50 Cent Army, fans who support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Pekka Sari asks, Winston from Serpensa said in his last live stream that your political propaganda channel paid by the Falun Gong. Are you going to respond? Ah, the China Uncensored funding conspiracy theories. I've heard a lot over the years, usually that were funded by the CIA or Falun Gong or just vague anti-China forces. Now typically I hear that from professional Chinese trolls, so I was actually a bit surprised to hear that coming from Winston. I actually like a lot of his videos, even though we don't always see eye to eye. And I know he tries to be accurate with his information, so I was surprised to hear he jumped on that conspiracy theory bandwagon. Anyway. He's wrong about this. We've been very open about where the funding for China Uncensored comes from. About 20% is from YouTube ad revenue, and the other 80% is from people like you, our roughly 2,000 supporters on Patreon. And that being said, I want to make something very clear. I am totally open to secret funding, especially from the CIA. They have loads of money. Then maybe our studio could look more like this, instead of this. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, Pekka. And if you'd like your question answered on the show, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. Remember, 80% of our revenue comes from you guys. And as a way of saying thanks, I'll give you some cool perks as well as answering your questions on the show. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.